Welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzo. And I'm Dr. Brad Weening. On today's episode, I'd like to say I'm thankful after Canadian Thanksgiving for the sun being out. Yeah, it is a nice day, finally. Okay, so we got a tricky case today for our Tricky Tuesday. This is generally someone who is medically uh, unwell. They, they have a lot of comorbidities. And a lot of people will ask us in the office or even email us saying, am I too sick for a total knee or a total hip replacement? Yeah. What do, you, what do you tell them, Paul? Yes, you are. <laughs> no, I usually go through the whole risk-benefit ratio with them and then help them make their own decision as to whether or not it's safe to proceed. Ultimately, the final decision is made by either an internist or an anesthetist um, because their, their medical sickness often will make the surgery a little more difficult, but the other risks are more significant. Okay, let's go look at the x-ray. Okay, so here are the x-rays of our patient today who uh, needs total knee replacement. What do you see? So I see a couple things. One, the bone is strikingly thin or osteoporotic. It is not as white as a normal bone. Okay, so she ha what if I told you she's been in a wheelchair for about eight months now? That would make sense. She has something called disuse osteopenia. All right, so we're worried about this bone that isn't very well mineralized, so it may fracture as we're doing the case. And she has some deep defects, mostly on the lateral compartment or the outside, but also a little bit on the inside, so it's going to have to be a pretty deep cut on the tibia. Right, so we've got some bone loss. So we've got weak bone and bone loss that we're going to have to deal with intraoperatively, but luckily we have all the equipment we need uh, to deal with just about anything we find. Okay, Paul, are we going to go scrub? No. No, we're not going to scrub. We're not going to scrub. Well. Remember how I was saying that our patient was not very medically well? They had some issues. They had some issues, and I'd sent her for a preoperative anesthesia consult. To, to try to optimize her and right. prevent surprises. Right, because safety is first. And the anesthetist was uh, very astute and ordered a test of the heart, an echocardiogram. We just got the results back uh, not long ago, and it turns out that she has something called aortic stenosis. So her aortic valve, yep. main valve coming out of the heart, is too small right now. So she's having a difficult time um, pumping blood. Okay, and that causes a lot of unique issues during surgery and with different types of anesthetics. Right. Okay, so what, what are we going to do? We, well, the case was canceled. We had case, to cancel case. the case. All right. And now, uh, that's a good thing because if you look at it, the glass is half full. We found this problem before we went ahead and did surgery Yep. Uh, and she would have been at a very high risk for complication like a heart attack Right. Uh, if we uh, proceeded uh, without having found that. So, so this way she can go see a cardiologist maybe, yep. find out if there's something to do because there might not be something to do for her. That's right. At least we'd be more aware. Yep. Uh, so this was really a case of, as you had said, too tricky a Tuesday. Too tricky a Tuesday. So this way, she ultimately can decide whether the risks and benefits are acceptable as well as the anesthetist, and if they say yes, then we would replace her knee. Yeah, um, I just went and spoke to the family, explained everything uh, to them. Disappointing, but better. Right, safer. So if you like this video, please like us uh, and subscribe to our channel. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. And so is the anesthetist. See you next time.